Hey friend, welcome back. I've got another interview for you today with a light phone user. Her name is Anna and she is a mother of three. She's in her 30s. Uh, and uh, she's got a she's got a great story to share with you. Uh, some kind of tips and things of how she deals with her phone and how she kind of views technology, digital technology, in her life and with her family. And uh, I think there's some things that are going to surprise you and stand out for you. And one of the things that I wanted to talk about was at the end of our interview today. Uh, I was just kind of riffing and I really kind of came up with why I'm doing these interviews. And uh, I think that there is an unspoken, just unspoken um, or little understood point that digital technology will somehow elevate humanity, make us better, uh, make us, um, I don't know, improve our lives, if you will. and. One of the things that I'm, I'm coming to realize is that no matter what you do, right, and what you add into your life to, to, uh, to have a life of convenience, if you will, or to make things easier, um, is that there's still the human condition that, that a piece of technology is not going to solve. And what is the human condition is really answering the question for yourself of why am I here and what am I going to do with this life that I have, right? Uh, a, a smart device, a smartphone is not going to help you answer that. And I think what it, what's happened is, is that we are looking for other people to tell us, right? We're, we don't really realize that that's what's happening, but we're looking for significance in others. And uh, maybe, maybe there's some of that in watching this video. My hope is, while I'm putting this out there, is not to become a hermit, but actually to, 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 to raise the flag and let you know that uh, watching stuff on YouTube should be a uh, viewed as a library approach, right? I'm going to go find this book and I'm going to read it, not just a browsing through the algorithm. Uh, you need to be mindful of all of those things. And that's, that's what we're here to highlight and to talk about. So if you want to get more of this, there's a link below uh, to my quote unquote newsletter, right? I send out a few things when I do this. Um, and there's no other... Um, there's no other motivation from me other than to to find like-minded people. And if you want to get on and uh, be interviewed and kind of talk to me about your experience, or I'm kind of curious about having someone who is thinking about it but not hasn't quite yet made made the transition to a uh, wise phone. So that would be interesting as well. So without further ado, let's jump into the interview with Anna, uh, mother of three. Uh, wonderful conversation, wonderful woman, and uh, I can't wait for you to share or to see her. Thank you so much. I'll see you again. Good morning. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for taking a few moments to uh, to watch this video. It is another installment uh, where I interview other people who have made the decision to move away from smart devices, uh, smartphones in particular, and uh, and, and just to kind of talk about how they did it, why they did it, what they do, how they handle certain situations in hopes that it might serve you if you're kind of thinking about it and maybe you're afraid to kind of make that switch. So um, I want to introduce to you Anna uh, she, and uh, she's my friend both from uh, uh, watching these videos but we also both use a, a blogging slash social media tool called microblog, micro.blog and I want to give a little plug to Manton and Jean and the team over there. Uh, but Anna, thank you so much for taking a few moments to spend with me this morning. Yes, thanks for having me. Glad to share. Awesome. So let's start with um, let's just start with what device do you use, and when? Give paint me a picture of a timeline of kind of like the inflection point of that tipping point, if you will, of when you went when you you basically said, okay, I'm ordering this device, I'm going to make the move, and. And include in that response, did you have any temptations to ever go back, to put that SIM card back into a smartphone? Yeah, so um, I use the Light Phone. I'm a Light user, and that wasn't my first choice, um, so I'll get to that in a minute as well. But um, actually, the, the start was in 2020, summer of 2020, when everything was going online, and I had had enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, and so that's actually when I first got rid of social media. Um, 
except for um, I still used YouTube a little bit, but like got rid of my Facebook accounts, my Instagram accounts, just wanted to be completely out of that um, world, I guess you could say. And that kind of uh, created the question in my mind of, is it possible to also get rid of my smartphone? Because now that I wasn't using those um, social media outlets, it was becoming, there was becoming less and less need for the smartphone. I wasn't feeling like I needed it anymore. Um, mm -hmm. And it was more so just a hassle. Um, so I did a lot of research and waited a while. The first phone I ended up wanting to get was called, or is called the Mudita Pure. And I really liked um, the aesthetic of that phone, the look of it. It had the real buttons, which I was into. Um, but it was still in production. And um, it was it was pricier than what I wanted to spend to spend on um, a wise phone is uh, one of the one of the terms that I came across from a friend a few months ago so I've been using that to kind of counter smartphone um, but uh, so I, I waited and I waited and then I finally pulled the plug um, this was probably let's see sometime in 2021 so sometime last year I ended up pre-ordering the Mudita Pure and I was just kind of waiting. So I had already made my payment um, and I was getting all the updates, but um, time was just kind of still continuing and I was still using that smartphone and just really wanting to get rid of it. I had looked at some flip phones, but I mean, I like aesthetic and none of them are really aesthetically pleasing. Mm -hmm. um, one thing also that was important to me is I did not want a camera on my phone. Um, if I wanted to take a picture of something, I wanted to be intentional, bring, um, bring a camera with me if I knew it was going to be a place where I wanted to take photos. And if it, I didn't have a camera with me, I wanted to use that opportunity to be in the present and just enjoy the moment without feeling like I had to capture it for all of eternity. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so in that time period where I was waiting for my Mudita Pure to ship, um, and I was still researching. That's when I came across the light phone. Um, and they had a really great promotion running at the time um, that ended up having it be a lot less than the Mujita Pure. And so um, I was just like, I, I'm just going to do it. I'm, I don't want to wait anymore. Um, there was also some question about if the Pure phone would even work um, in my area. And so I didn't want to pay all that money, have it finally get here, and then not even be able to use it. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, and I did have a wait for the light phone as well because it was, that was also a pre-order, but not nearly as long. So, yeah, then it was the summer, uh, this past summer of um, 2022 that that arrived. I think it was June. Um, and, yeah, it came. I set it up, and there haven't been any temptations to go back um to my smartphone, I, I did use it occasionally those first few weeks um, for some reading or to check the weather, those type of things, just because I was so used to it, the finance apps. But um, then I realized my husband works from home and he has a smartphone, so I do rely on his mm -hmm. um, to do those things or if friends are just very um, stuck on texting, it's it's kind of a pain to text with the light phone. I think they do have a, um, a talk to text feature, but I haven't tried that out yet. Hmm. Um, but so anyway, so I just end up using my husband's phone to text messages. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But, um, were, were you an iPhone user before just out of curiosity? I was not. I had an Android. Okay. Yeah. Cause sometimes mm -hmm. when, when people switch, when I switched, I didn't know how to, uh, this is in the weeds and it's irrelevant, but iPhone has this thing called iMessage and you can kind of do it to your email address. And, and some of my texts were going to my phone when I wanted them to go to, or going to my iPad versus my phone. And it was, it's, I think going from Android, it, it's a little cleaner uh, yes. on the texting. Talk, talk about, let's talk about, um, got a couple of notes from that. Talk about what is your feeling or your gut feeling about 
people that say, well, I don't have to go all the way to a, to a, a wise phone. I don't have to go to, to, to that type of phone. What if I just take my iPhone and just remove all the apps? No social media, no, just, just get, my, get my iPhone or my Android phone as, as clean and as, as, as little as possible. And I'll just have my music and I'll just have my camera and, my, um, and I'll just have my uh, text messages on there and a map, you know, and that's all, I, that's all I'll do. I'll do. What, 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 what's your take on that and, and do you think that's a viable option? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I know for me personally, I wanted to just get rid of the thing. It's almost like something about the physical object. I just needed to like be out of sight, um, kind of start fresh. Um, and I mean, it might work for other people, but I'm, I tend to be more in the all or nothing category. So it's like I either want to use it to the fullest extent or or I just want to get rid of it. And I did try that for a while, like kind of after I had purchased um, the Mudita Pure and I was waiting on that, I slimmed down my phone and got rid of as much as I could, tried to use my laptop more intentionally when I could and only use my phone as a phone. But still, it's like, it's just so easy to take with you everywhere as well. Mm -hmm. um, and whereas having a more simple, basic phone there isn't much you can do on it, like even if you wanted to. So it just kind of sits in my bag. And when I go out, it's there for emergencies. But I feel like there's something about having that smartphone that's capable of a lot more that you just, you're attached to it. Yeah. So I don't know. Me personally, I wouldn't recommend it. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know that there's could do it and that might be what works for them. So. It, it might. And, and so my, I, I'm going to offer a little bit of thoughts around that because I, I, I find it interesting because... Every time, um, the all or nothing comment is very is very appropriate. I think because um, when I have made the break, right, and and I do, I use, I, I show my flip phone quite a bit, my little Sunbeam, which I love, um, and it, it's it's like breaking any kind of addiction, in my opinion. Um, that after a couple of months of not using it, your brain goes, well, I, I can handle that. Give me back my phone. I mean, it's like I, I'm, I'm cured, if you will, or I'm, I'm okay with it. You think that the substance or that thing doesn't, doesn't still have the, like you, 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 you know, we all, anytime you encounter any type of an addictive substance, there's, there's a reason, there's a trap there that'll, that'll lure, lure you in. And we get this arrogance to think that we can, we can, we're not, we're going to be immune to it. And there's been a couple of times where, especially during the world series, I love baseball and I wanted to listen to it. So I popped my SIM card back in there and my phone was stock. It didn't have, I didn't have my email set. I didn't have anything on the phone other than, uh, and it was just like I kept picking up the device. And then my brain started working towards, well, if I've got the phone, you know, I just started rationalizing. Well, if i got the phone, I'll just go ahead and do this and I'll do that. Oh, and I could do that and I could put my to-do list back on there. And mm -hmm. next thing you know, I'm just down this rabbit hole of like uh, trying to make all these decisions, if you will, of like a decision tree of like what I can use it for, what I can't. And it, it, it's like um, I do this in my diet too. It's like I, I, I can't I, – I very – I don't respond well to dairy and it's like, but I love ice cream and I love certain things. And it's just like, so I try to moderate and just have a little bit. And I always wind up messing that up too. And it's just like, there's something about the way our brain is, is once living in that gray area is very, very, very hard for a lot of us. And it just, and, and the phone is so sexy and so cool looking. It just, it just drags you right back into its world. It seems like. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Spot on. Uh, so my response has been just to let it go. And then it, while I'm on my little, I think letting me go on about this. One of the things I, I'm curious about this, I was thinking about the analogy of a smoky room. So, you know, when you're younger and you go to one of these little dive bars and you walk in, places don't really have cigarette smoke as much in place. I don't know about Michigan, but in Texas, you can't smoke indoors anymore. But if you're old enough to remember when you could, you could go into these little, these little dive bars and the room, it's just full of, you're just, you just walk in and you're just like, man, I cannot, but, but within about 30 minutes, you know, you kind of tough it out and you don't hardly even notice the smoke anymore. And mm -hmm. then you walk outside uh, to take a break or whatever. And, and even at five minutes and you walk back in the room and you're right back into like, oh my God, how did, how was I sitting in this room filled with smoke so much? And the analogy that I'm trying to get to is that it's, that's with like the phone people, when you have the phone in your possession all the time, you don't even really notice until you really drop that phone 
that that you, you don't the, the phone is like the smoke in the room. You don't even notice how much of a grip it has on you. I don't think. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and it actually reminded me too when you held up your flip phone. I was like, oh yeah, I was gonna have mine near me so that I could show it if people yeah. wanted to see what the light phone looked like. But I completely forgot because it's just <laughs> not on my mind anymore. It's just sitting over there in my bag. And <laughs> yes, yes, exactly, exactly. I, I say that all the time when when I watch videos uh, exploring it. People are like, well, this is how I get through my morning routine without picking up my phone. I'm like, I don't pick up this phone unless it unless someone's calling me. Basically, it's 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 not even a my phone doesn't cross my mind at all, and, and it's it's funny how uh, it's, if you want to say a little bit more about that, I'm assuming you're kind of the same way, right? That that where that that decision to when how how when am I going to pick up my phone is, is is not even relevant anymore. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's true. Now, granted, because I did make the 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 switch, so I'm I'm home all day. Um, I homeschool my boys and. Um, my husband works from home, so we're kind of all just home together. So there's really no need, no need to um, <clears throat> be having a phone um, at this point, unless we want to get in touch with friends. But um, what what ends up happening is because I switch more towards using my laptop, I do find that the draw has kind of shifted. So it's like I do probably check my email on my laptop a little more than I would have before. Um, but um, as far as the phone, it's kind of like, I actually, it's off. I just leave it off. If someone wants to get a hold of me and it's an emergency, then they can contact my husband. Or um, <laughs> I Actually, we did get a home phone, but uh, I have the ringer off on that as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they can leave a message and I'll get back to them when I can or when I see that we have a message. But yeah, I've, I've really downshifted um, that kind of, um, it's just kind of, I feel like people feel like they need to get in touch with people all the time. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's always an emergency. Yes. You need a text and you need to be, someone needs to read that text right away. Um, but I kind of just try to subdue all that. And mm -hmm. like, I want to be present with my family right now. Once when I had my first son, that actually was, I think what sparked it in my mind. It wasn't full blown into this yet my, my oldest son just turned six. So it was probably about six years ago where I had that little thought of this is really, this phone is kind of taking over more than I want it to. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And it kind of went in ebbs and flows and culminated into today where I realized I just needed to not have it at all. Yeah. But um, yeah. I mean, it's kind of all over the place, but. <laughs> no, no, I think that's good because I think the missing piece is that we, it, the missing piece, I think, for people that they don't want to acknowledge uh, is that this is not a tool like um, a knife in the kitchen or the toaster or just a device where it's like, I'm trying to think of something electronic that's not, doesn't have, but the, the, the device itself even even if it's if it's if it's like this is one of my little iPods that that uh, that I use sometimes, um, even like this is a tough device for me. I, I I don't I don't like, but my point is this device is designed to be picked up. That even if there's no software on it, it's just so nice in the hand, and you're just like you know they they've designed this thing. And then on top of that, the apps and services outside of even social media, they want you to use them as much as possible and we're going up against when you're in the room with your device you don't really it's hard to acknowledge that there is a third mind in the room with you and that mind is 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 probably smarter than you even though you don't want to acknowledge that probably a lot more thought out than you uh, as far as what their intentions are for you and and uh that's the part that no one likes to talk about that that yeah. that it's it's designed, and there are, there are forces trying to make you use the phone for they just are. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and uh, uh, okay, I've got a couple there. Let, let let's wrap up this one section then. Let's talk about the camera. So I find it interesting how many thousands of pictures I've taken since I've had a smartphone, and how few pictures I probably have prior to two thousand and five. Mm -hmm. is maybe you know five or six pictures a year and uh is what i'm guessing um maybe less and uh 
And you could say, well, now I have a place that I know that they're stored, they're in Google Photos or they're in my iCloud or whatever. But then there's this overconsumption and this idea of like, if you don't have a picture, it didn't happen kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'm curious, you know, uh, talk a little, because you, you have a pretty good, I, I got a sense that this camera thing is something most people think about, oh, I lost my phone and I'll just figure out my camera. I still like they, they view camera as a high priority still. And it seems like you had had a different perception of that camera issue. Talk, talk a little bit about that and how you how do you address it? And when do you what do you use and that sort of thing? Talk a little bit yeah. more about that. Yep. Um, yeah, it's very it's very interesting. Um, and just thinking back to that timeline that you mentioned, too, about um, before the smartphone with the cameras, it was, there was very few photos taken. I mean, maybe I would go on a trip and I would make sure to get, if I didn't have the, before the digital cameras and Mm -hmm. had the little, uh, disposable cameras and I would bring that and get them, (laughs) get them, uh, I can't even think of the word anymore. How sad is that? Developed. Um, Developed. Thank you. (laughs) Do you you remember, I'm interjecting real quick, but do you remember weddings? Uh, You might not be old enough, uh, but they would actually keep little disposable cameras on the table. And your, your whole objective as a guest was to pick up that camera on your table and take pictures around your table. Do you, have you ever been to a wedding like that? I ha- yeah, I that I do remember that before, like the influx of professional photographers, and that everyone had to have one, and it was just relying on the guests to yeah <laughs> to it be- it was, be- capture the experience. Yeah, before smartphones. But anyway, I, I pulled you away from your topic. Yeah, that's- um, and uh, yeah, so I feel like there was just all of a sudden this this influx of photos, and I. I'm a very type A person, a little bit OCD, and um, having all those photos is overwhelming. Mm-hmm. I, I personally, I just, I think it's overwhelming, um, especially when you have the ability to try to get the photo just right. If it's not how you like, you can just take it again and again and again and again. Um, whereas with the disposable photos, you kind of just got one shot because <laughs> yes. you didn't want to waste waste. Um, the pictures on trying to get the right thing. You just kind of took it as you saw it and it came out how it came out. Um, and I also think that, um, you know, it was exciting. I like taking all the photos once my first son was born. I did notice then as he got older and then as I had more children that like taking all those pictures, it just, I mean, I still like to enjoy those moments and look back at them. But it just, I feel like, is, has become too much. Um, I was recently watching a, uh, a video online. It was an, it was an interview um, about, I think, stress and anxiety. And um, the person who was being interviewed talked about how that humans were not made to remember every intricate detail of what they looked like 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago, et cetera, hmm. that remembering, I thought this was interesting. I hadn't, I haven't looked into it more, mm-hmm. but basically trying to capture and freeze in place every moment of our past, um, can prohibit us from just accepting who we are in the future or in the present. Mm-hmm. Um, because we're trying to hold on to what was instead of just being in what is right now. Um, and so I, hmm. I don't necessarily know if I agree or not with that. It was just, it was interesting. It kind of sparked, um, something in me. And, um, I just, I thought that was an, a neat idea. Um, just, I don't know. So that was one thing, but then also wanting to kind of rely on my memory, like enjoying a moment and then just remembering that. Um, of course I want to have some photos. Um, but I think there's something about having a bunch of photos and then having them all just on the computer. Um, I've been having more of an effort to print photos that are meaningful around certain events, um, have those printed out and in a physical album. So that way we can just look at them because I mean, we might skim back if we're looking for a specific photo in Google photos or whatnot, but there's just so much to go through. Um, I almost feel like it just muddles the, um, the, specialness isn't a word, but it just, it muddles, um, just the, the special moments that we want to look back at because there's just so many. Absolutely. Um, so therefore going forward again, I do rely on my husband's smartphone. <laughs> <I love laughs> so it. if there's something like, 
really cool that or I don't know. Like we um we had an owl in our tree and we our bedroom is kind of like right in the trees and so we're we're about halfway up um ground level and it's like we're like right in the trees we have these big windows and we looked over and we saw an owl and it was just literally sitting right there and so it's like something like that i wanted to i said oh go get your phone we can take a picture like that was a cool moment that i really wanted to remember um but otherwise i just try to be more intentional and with what my kids are doing and not just taking a bunch of photos of them all the time. When we're out, I don't want to bring a camera with me. I just want to enjoy what we're doing when we're out. Um, I do have a point and shoot. Um, my husband has a nicer camera. Um, nice. I don't yeah. know. I think we're just trying to live more in the moment and not through a lens, but actually through our, <laughs> I love our it. own eyeballs. <laughs> I, I, I agree with you on, on, on all those counts. I started, um, uh, I, I'm into index cards, and I started uh, a little section um, uh, in my in my little folder box. I don't I don't I don't have it where you can see it. But if something big happened, like the day the queen died, I don't know why I recorded that. Or uh, I I basically take an index card and kind of write down, put the date. It's mm-hmm. not every day, but I would I would say probably I'm sorry I'm up to about twelve to fifteen days out of the year. And I just kind of file it chronologically. And it was kind of interesting because I've been doing it for a while and I can just grab last year and I could be like, oh, yeah, we did this. Oh, yeah, at Easter we did that. Oh, yeah. And, it, and, it's, and it's interesting like if it was in a journal because I've thought about that. It's, it's, so, it's like you've got to page through the book, but it's like you can just pull out the index cards and just kind of clip and, and it, kind of like you're flipping through pictures like you said, right? And, then, and yeah. then you just gave me the idea of printing more photos and, and taking those photos and put the, putting filing them essentially right behind, maybe making two copies. One goes into a, uh, an album like you talked about, and the other we can go in my index card behind the date of whatever that was. Thoughts on yeah. that? I don't know. I just read yeah. them. Yeah, no, that's great. The, the index card thing especially. Um, I had a friend who, she she did an index, index card, but she did have one per year, and I think she might have put like... Um, so she put every date and then she might have put a few, maybe like, I don't know, three to five years going forward on it. And every day she would just write a little sentence about what they did that day. I love it. And so then when the next year came, she would be on the same card again, but she could look back and see what did we do last year on this day or the year before on this day. And then kind of just have a a little history that way. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's really neat. Um, go ahead. I did have. I had another thought, but I forgot about it. So, so go ahead, and I will. Try what, to was it about the camera, or was it about the dates? I think it was about the dates and the indexing, but yeah. <laughs> well, because there's books about like one line per day in the journal. In and, yeah. and, and I'm I'm going to throw out something as someone who's 54, and I've had a lot of different little computers, and gone from Palm Pilots to uh, to the rise of the Macintosh. You know, Apple, uh, and now the iCloud, and you got and you know I, Google. Anyway, the point is. Is that I remember having, (laughs) I remember burning CDs of like files of like, oh, I got to save these files, archive them, if you will. Mm -hmm. And now I don't even have a computer with a, with a DVD drive or a CD drive to read anything, right? It's like, we don't think about, you think, you think you're storing all of this digital data and, Mm -hmm. and I'm just here to tell you as someone who's gone 30 years of, of kind of being in the modern age, if you will, that, um, unless you're extremely intentional uh, if you really care about it, you should bring it back into the analog world and file it or put it in. Th- those notebooks are going to be around and you're going to access them a lot more than, uh, and if it's not, then if it's not worth printing or putting someplace, then it, you probably don't give a crap about it anyway. That's right? what I think. Yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. And I, and I you remember, remember what I said through that too. So there perfect. You um, just kind of about that line per day. Um, you had mentioned, um, uh, microblog earlier Yes. and that's actually what, um, so it was about a little over a month ago that I found microblog and it's actually because my husband is working on, um, he's working on kind of like an app for web developers called type log. And, um, he introduced this phrase microblog to me and that that was kind of, he was seeing a need for that or that people were calling for that. And, um, and so I just was like, Oh, what's microblog? And I looked it up and, Apparently there was a thing, and he just kind of meant microblogging in general. But mm-hmm. I didn't know there was actually a 
um, a website called Microblog or an app or however people use it. Um, but, and the thing that I love about that is because I love writing. Um, but as a mom of three young boys, I don't really get the time to just sit and write anymore. So I just kind of started using it as, let me just write a little line or if something comes up in the day and I want to remember it or I have a thought or I'm thinking about something um, or enjoying something in the seasons or whatnot, then let me just do a little, like one little line and remember it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not exactly your index card idea, but I'm kind of using it in the same way of um, this is something I want to remember. I might not want to write a whole whole par- a whole book about it, but <laughs> absolutely, um, it's just a neat way to kind of quickly get something in there so absolutely that seems more intentional than i was never into twitter so i just i like this because i did like blogging beforehand so it feels more like blogging um but i just like that micro aspect about it that's new to me yes so let's talk about that just for a minute to set it up so micro dot blog is a service uh that was created by a gentleman named matten lives here in austin since uh never met him in person but uh, i'm in the same area that he is and uh, it, it does cost money. It's $5. But essentially what it gives you is a front-end website. So you can post. It's very easy. To, it's just a simple little interface. Uh, you type in a message. But there's also a, a community. Uh, and you can follow people. But it's, it's not quite like a Twitter where you can see everyone who's following who. And there's no retweeting. And there's, there's just comments you post. If someone happens to see it or, or they're following you, they can, they can make a comment. But you also have a real live web page that with, with your post that anyone in the world can see that you can send out links to just like a regular blog. And it gives you an opportunity to post pictures. Or it, it, it's kind of it's kind of like before social media, essentially, where you have a web presence, if you will, saying this is who I am, this is what I'm doing, this is what I care about, uh, that sort of thing. That's, that's right. how, would you agree? Yeah, no, I definitely agree. And that's the thing I liked about it, too, is I feel like it takes that, um, it takes away the performance or um, Mm -hmm. the, Mm -hmm. I don't know, the kind of the competition of what I feel like social media is today. And it just brings it back to simply, this is me. It's just, it's kind of more like the classic web, what it was like beforehand, just kind of putting out there who you are and connecting with people, but in just a very simple, um, authentic way. I love it. I love it. I'm going to shift gears in total different topic, but since, since my, um, uh, kind of diving into this whole wise phones, uh, uh, getting away from smartphone venture that I'm, I'm just kind of exploring just as a personal kind of a personal hobby. Like this, this is just, something I'm just doing to, to kind of learn more. What I've noticed, uh, both in what I've been attracted to, uh, as far as learning from them and also who's responded to me, for example, I've got a couple more interviews scheduled. They've all been female. They've all been women. Uh, and I find, I find that very, I didn't really think about it until I was preparing for our interview today. I was like going through, I've got uh, a woman named Jasmine coming up and, and I've emailed, i met with Paige and you and I've got two more that have responded to me and uh, I know I, I have I have uh, been attracted to, to women making videos about their smartphone I think mainly I was thinking through this I, I think the sincerity is a lot more where uh, I hate to say some of the guys that I watch were more clickbaity or uh, perf- like you said performative um, mm-hmm. there's this woman Erica in uh, Oregon that's just like I don't know. She's so she's just she's just a mom, and she's just kind of like telling it like it is. And then there's an artist named Ashton, and uh, I'm kind of curious uh, what your thoughts around that, as far as women in, in this kind of quote unquote tech or low tech space. Uh, do you have any comments on 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 that? Yeah, a few different thoughts came to mind. Um, I guess the first one I would say is um, I feel like from my perspective and just where I was at, that there's a lot of um, anxiety that happens around um, social media in general. And I um, bring it back to social media because I feel like that's a big part of having a smartphone. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that one of the ways, um, for some reason, it seems like 
women might tend to get more anxious or be more stressed than men do. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that one of the ways of trying to combat that, at least it was in my life, was paring down. And one of those things was getting rid of the smartphone. Um, Well, first social media and then the smartphone of trying to just really just get rid of the things um, in my life and my day that were a distraction or that were causing me stress or anxiety and um, just really stripping things back to be more simple. So I think maybe perhaps that might be one one reason. Mm -hmm. Um, Another thought that I had, um, so the person, um, the acquaintance that I have who actually gave me the wise phone terminology, um, he's a man. So I know there are men who are using, who are, are, I mean, obviously you yourself as well, Mm -hmm. um, but like I know that there... (laughs) Um, There are people who are, um, others out there, I'm sure, who are um, getting rid of their smartphones and switching to a more simple, basic phone. Um, But maybe they're just not um, talking about it as much. Or, well, you did say yourself that the difference you noticed and the authenticity of um, who are posting. And I I personally haven't. Um, I was able to catch some of your your last interview. And I think with Paige, was that her name? Mm -hmm. Um, but I haven't really necessarily explored videos of people who have who have um, downsized, I guess, or switched to a more basic phone. So I'm not really sure myself. But um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I think the biggest thing was was just in terms that you said that one of them was a mom, and I don't know, just from my own personal perspective, mm-hmm. thinking that it's just uh, to kind of try to reduce some of that anxiety or pressure or stress that smartphones seem to place yes on your day absolutely i think i think that's a very good insight about the anxiety and i think uh, uh women in our culture um uh smart especially social media it's, this is me speaking as a male but it it uh the perfectionism or to be a certain way or to look a certain way um there's just it, it's probably always been that for for women in some ways, but now it's even more heightened. Um, mm-hmm. And 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 what I, what I find listening to that about anxiety, what, what I help I help people uh, with sobriety. Uh, that's one of the little things that I do: email supports and just kind of kind of just kind of what I'm doing with this, trying to get the word out to try to get people's mind around a life without alcohol. And what I find so much is that they have anxiety, just like what you were mentioning. And yet the remedy for that, ang- both the cause and the remedy is the actual substance, whether it be the smartphone or the alcohol. And the, and no one really realizes, they don't realize the very first part of it. They're like, I feel anxiety. I'm going to get a little relief by numbing out with my, with my smart device and just kind of chilling out, which basically there's a tipping point that brings you back into anxiety and it goes up and it's just, the, and that's the cycle, right? I mean, it, it's, it's easy to see when you're not in it, but when you're in it, it, it seems like a puzzle you can't solve. And, uh, and, and alcohol can be much the same way. You, you, yeah, you start using it from a casual perspective and then it starts driving anxiety and it just, just like I said. So, uh, I think that's pretty insightful because, um, I, I can't imagine in our, in our culture, you know, with like your homeschooling and all the, all the responsibilities of being a mom and then, yeah, uh, just the hyper connected world that we live in. There's no, there's no need to be that. I don't, and I'm not sure that we were, uh, we're social creatures, um, but I don't think we really need to be that connected all the time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree completely. Um, back in 2014, I, um, I wrote, uh, I wrote a post, um, and it was called information overload. And even, I mean, it was already kind of in the middle of, of this whole connected era, but, but just recognizing that we are just being bombarded with so much information. There is just so much connection everywhere and it's neat. It's, it's neat to be connected, but I feel like that then disconnects us from the people who are physically, um, right with us. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to scale back and kind of switch gears because I wanted to be intentional, um, with my kids and, and really connect with them. They are, they're, this is the season of life I'm in right now. Like I would love to, 
to be connected with other people too, and I am to a point. But right now, my my main job is connecting with my children and mm-hmm. teaching them and raising them. And there will be a time where we can bring more people into our lives. But right now, I'm just kind of focused. <laughs> I love it. I love it. One of the emails that we exchanged, you talked about texting less, just using text messaging less. And I think that uh, my perspective is that we, we've we grown to use it like a crutch to sort of feel like we're connected to people, but we're really just texting and we're still, and I think a lot of people hide behind it uh, from mm-hmm. a um, wanting to talk. I, I can't, I, it, it's odd to me how people want to text, but you mentioned phone call and they're like, oh God, I got to take a phone call. Like they, they view it as like this chore. Uh, but yeah. and I haven't quite, I haven't quite puzzled that one out yet all the way, but um <laughs> I do have a thought about that. Yeah. I have mixed I have mixed feelings about that only because so knowing my perspective as a busy mom who's interrupted a bajillion times a day, um, like it's it's only because I specifically asked my husband not to let the kids in the room that I'm able to, <laughs> to focus this long. Because right. they would have run in here a bunch of times already. Um, so it's like texting in that sense is nice because it's like okay, I'm helping my son with one thing and then trying to make plans with someone and then I can be interrupted and do something else. And then, But at the same time, um, I don't like it because then, like you said, it's like kind of that fake, um, it's not that real connection. It kind of mm-hmm. is a connection dis- it's disguised as thinking you're, it's connected, but it's not. And... Um, so even though I do, I did end up kind of switching gears and using text on my husband's phone a little bit more to try to talk with people. My focus has shifted where I'm like, if this is just going to take too long to talk through, let's meet up. Like I've kind of just stopped engaging in long conversations mm-hmm. through text. And I'm kind of just like, if we have this much to talk to, then let's just get together in person or yes, let me just try to call this person or let's set up a time to talk on the phone and kind of just shifting that like text is great for some things for for quick messages but but you're right i feel like it, it's kind of shifted to where people are relying on that as their form of connection when really they need to be saying hey let's talk on the phone or better yet hey let's schedule a time to get together and talk in person good good advice because i i agree with you i think i would follow that up one of the strategies that i I've, I've been trying to implement uh, going back to my index card, I have an index card for the for the key people in my life, and I and I'm I, I'm trying to use a strategy called batch communication. Um, mm-hmm. It's not really a great term or anything. It's just something I just came up with. And the idea is essentially, oh, yeah, I need to talk to Johnny about this. Okay, da 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 And I make, instead of immediately reaching for the phone and texting a one-off, it's like I gather thoughts that that are really not that urgent, but there's stuff I want to sh- I want to shoot the bull with them about or remind them about or whatever, and and uh, I make sure once a week that I reach out to them. I'm like, hey, and I and I look at my card and I'm like, these are the things that I thought about we should catch up on, and that way we have conversations. Uh, mm-hmm. I think I think that text messaging was designed to be an asynchronous communication tool, meaning that more like email, where like I send this and then they can respond when they want, and it's just a way to get. A message to them and in yep. the smartphone world because because text messaging was was actually designed when when everyone had a phone like this and it was hard yeah. to text and it was yeah. just send a message they'll get to it they'll respond and now smartphones just try to drag us into a synchronous communication so that you're just constantly having to be what's the message oh wait a couple seconds then another message and then another message and um mm-hmm. Synchronous versus asynchronous, and I think emails asynchronous, phone calls obviously, and in, in person is the most synchronous, right? Because you're there eyeball to eyeball with someone. Um, but it's it, text can go either way, and 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 most people try to drag you into a synchronous conversation with them that can last yeah. days upon days upon days, right? Yeah. That, yeah. And talk, talk about it, uh, anxiety. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So anyway, I'm I'm on, I'm on a uh, you just got me on a rant on that. I also I'm curious I'm, as a mother I'm going to throw this out there. I don't have children, but just as someone who watches other families out in the world, um, I remember growing up in the '90s. Uh, kind of that's when I became an a quote unquote adult, young adult, and um, you know you struggle with things, finances. Oh my car is kind of doing this thing. What do I do with this? And it was like. I had to call my dad, literally, like 
long distance because I lived in a different state. And mm-hmm. I had to wrestle with problems like think, okay, should I call my dad? Am I really going to call my dad again about this thing? Am I going to really ask for another $200 because I'm, I'm or can I figure this out? Like there, it required me to problem solve is what I'm trying to say a little bit more. Like I feel the pressure. And yes, I know I could call my dad and help and get help if I needed it. And he may or may not, you know, give me a lesson and have to listen to him tell me to be my dad, basically, to, to like, you should plan for this or, or whatever life lesson. But it seems like now I'm witnessing every little micro problem that, that, that some kids are having. They're, they're texting their parents and it's just like, oh, Amazon, Amazon purchase can solve that or this can solve that. And none of them are sitting in with their problems trying to solve it for themselves. That that yeah. might sound a little too hypercritical on culture as someone who doesn't have kids, but I'm curious if you have any thoughts even around that. Um, I don't have any thoughts specifically, but I, I will say that that's a great point and definitely something that I uh, that I agree with and that I I'd love to think about more. So um, I don't have any personal. Okay, I'm just kind of throwing that out there. But yeah, no, I love that. L- yeah, I definitely. True. Let's let's go to okay. No social media. Uh, we talked about microblog. Do you have anything on your list? I'm going to throw it out there because I got a couple uh, as we go because we're at 40 minutes just on before I go to wrap up time. What 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 was on? Do you have any 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 uh, any things that you want to bring to the table? Um. So it's funny. I I had planned on writing notes, but <laughs> then life happened, and yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm just going to go for yeah. it. We're just having a conversation. This is going great. If you have if you have more that you you wanted to talk about, I've I've been able to kind of weave in the thoughts that I did have. So yep. so yeah, I think it's going good. Well, while we're on texting, let's talk about let's talk about texting just a little bit more. So I I, I it's funny that going back to my phone, uh, I enjoy. It's, it's interesting to me that I actually enjoy texting more on this phone because I use the voice to text, and the voice to text is very very good. And my iPhone had voice to text. But uh, it's just, it was so, it was like, uh, the, it seems like it would be easy, but the swiping and looking and then pulling up and then, and then hitting the button and it, it I, 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 I'm getting to a question, I think, and that is, I feel less frustrated with this phone. You would think you would be more frustrated with this phone, but I'm actually mm-hmm. less frustrated because there was a lot of times I try to do things on my smartphone and it's easy because you can swipe around, but then I was like, why isn't it doing this? Or a glitch or something would happen. And I'd get in this frustrated mode. Then I'm trying to solve the problem. And I, there I am. I'm stuck with this device where this thing, it doesn't do a lot. But what it does, I can pretty much rely on it that it's going to do what it's going to do. You know? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Do you have any, any thoughts around on your life phone on, on that? Yeah. Um, so... I guess one thing is I don't enjoy texting on the light phone. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, it has an it has an e ink display, and um, so it's a little slower, um, and there aren't physical buttons because it's just the screen. So that I didn't like either, mm-hmm. um, which is why I originally did want to get the Mudita Pure because it had the physical buttons, and um, I just feel like I. I guess I just feel like that would react more so better. Yeah. Um, it, and it, the light phone does have the voice to text. I haven't tried it yet. Again, because I feel like I feel like usually when I was using my phone before, it was always I always preferred things that I could do either without talking or without listening. Because again, I have children. And I'm more of an introvert, so in any quiet time I can get, <laughs> I appreciate. Um, whereas the voice to text, I just, I don't know. There's something about talking to the phone. I just haven't wrapped my mind around that yet. Like I just yes. don't want to do it. And like we, we, um, we have a Google home, which I have a real struggle with just because I really want to get rid of those, that smart technology in our house, but we like it for listening to music and, um, eventually I hope we'll be able to find kind of an al- alternate <laughs> way of doing that. But the thing that I hate is we also we use it for music and then we also use it um, as like timers if we're cooking or, mm-hmm. I don't know, different things for the boys. It's bedtime, whatnot. And I always, I just don't like talking to it. It just drives me nuts. Mm-hmm. Like I don't want to talk. To, I don't want to tell it to, I, I don't know. There's just something about that. So I feel like I have that same kind of fear wrapped up around the voice to text. Yes, yeah, yes. <laughs> Um, again, I haven't tried it yet. It probably would be a lot easier to send a message, um, but because I have my husband's phone kind of as that crutch, 
Um, yes. I just end up texting on his in the way that I'm familiar with and comfortable with. I was just going to... I was going to show this. This is a a, a simple timer, right? It's a three timer. Mm-hmm. It's a kitchen timer, basically. Right? Yeah. You know, it counts down. Yeah. You've seen one. I'm, everybody's seen one of these. But I use this on my desk. I, I, it's one of the best uh, tools that I've ever run across just to keep myself. Going back to your type A personality, it's like a, I, have to, I have to live by rules myself or I tend to just right. go into blottom. So I, I pressure myself a little bit uh, with that yeah. timer. <clears throat> And, uh, we do have we um, we do have a uh, it's like a it's a kids timer but it goes up to twenty minutes so you kind of just spin the wheel and you can have it at twenty minutes or under oh that's and nice it's like the colors kind of disappear as the time goes down to teach children kind of the concept of time um, so we use that but when we want something like for more than twenty minutes or um, we want to specifically have like an alarm for a specific time the next day or something like that. That's kind of when we just have been falling back to using that Google Home, but gotcha. But one day, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, so, oh, where, where am I? I I'm, I'm, I'm talk, texting, phone, camera. I mean, we've we've hit a we've hit a lot of topics. Um, yeah, I guess. Oh, sorry. No, go please. I was gonna say. I guess I did think of one thing as I was kind of in that spiel about timers. Um, was the idea of I am I am very thankful to be through with my smartphone. Um, the light phone gets gets me by with what I need for when I'm out of the house, and I just want to have something in case of emergency or to kind of just let my husband know, hey, I'm running ten minutes late or something like that. It does its job. The thing that um, I keep thinking back to is I do rely on my husband's smartphone. So kind of like just that question of is it is it possible to really like if I was in a different circumstance like if he had his phone and he didn't work from home like I guess it's just it bugs me that there's still that crutch kind of to use mm-hmm. his phone and just that thought of um, I don't know just I feel like there are kind of these crutches that people who have switched from a smartphone um, to a simpler basic phone, I feel like there's still these crutches that people kind of use to get by through the other things. And that might just be me wishing that we were in a less te- technological no. world, but... <clears throat> I, I, th- I think that's another misconception. I'm, I'm working on, on, on pulling all these together, these misconceptions. But the misconception, I think, that's out there that you're highlighting is that, uh, that you can pick up a smart device and you can, take a, you, you can walk down this path of using a smart device and that the that any time you wanted to, you could just turn around and reverse course and get back to where you were, and everything's the same. But it's not the same. The that that mm-hmm. path is being eroded behind us, so that if you let go, cult, culture basically has driven us to the point. Um, things that I see menus in restaurants parking you go to a parking place downtown I was in Dallas for uh, for an event I could even park in a parking lot without having an app the tickets for the for the event it wasn't a PDF that I could download or, or put in uh, it, it was I had to install an app so and show them a code on an app so I could not they wouldn't you know the they didn't tell me that before I bought the tickets, which were close to two hundred dollars, you know, a hundred dollars a piece. But now I've got to have an app with me, and so if I only if my wife wasn't with me, I wouldn't be able to go to the show, right? It's things like that that uh, unless people. So this is my movement speech, you know, and that, which was a qu- next question I had for you: whether this is a fad or a movement. But I think basically, if people don't, some percentage of the population don't resist that. That's where we're going to go. Right where where you basically are going to have to have a smart device to participate in culture, and and yeah. uh, it's already odd enough to be out there and not have a smartphone, and people make you feel like you're the you're an odd duck. I can handle that. I can tell by your personality that you kind of can handle that being labeled or or viewed as as sort of a you're forging your own path. But pretty mm-hmm. soon we, if we're not careful, we might not be able to have that as an option. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and that was one of the things, too, in 2020 when all the restaurants' menus became QR codes, and I just I, I couldn't stand it. I was like, can I just have a physical menu? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I, yeah. That's- I had one guy, not he didn't want to give me a menu, and I said, do you have anything with uh, any beef on the menu? Yeah, we have this. Yeah, so, and he's like, yes. And I was like, can you just tell me a couple? Of, like, 
I, I'm not. I'm not gonna look at a dog on. I it it uh, it got my back up, but 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 it's like you're there to to break bread with people and spend time with people at this table. Look people in the eye, and everyone's got a phone in there. I mean, the immediate thing is you got to pull out your phone to to start this 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 event. It's it's a yeah. it's a horrible message. It's a horrible thing. Yeah. It, it, it becomes. Am I the customer, or am I too inconvenient for you for you to hand me a menu? Basically. Like I've got to participate. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Um, yeah. So answer that question. Uh, well, before we go, that before that, before that, I've got this. I got. I saw a comment uh, that came to me that it was. I'm going to paraphrase this, and I'm going to throw the question to you to answer. It's easy for you to just not have a smartphone because you don't. You work from home, or you do your own thing. Uh, you know. Uh, you know, it's 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 not possible for me to live without a smartphone. Uh, and 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 those type of comments that have come to me, I, I'm I'm blown away because a, a smartphone didn't even exist 12 years ago, right? Yeah. I mean, we're 12, yeah, we're, 12 no. we're 12 years in, and it's already to the point of I can't live my life. Wow. Any, I mean, I, I'm just blown away by that people feel that way. I'm gonna throw that yeah, up to no. you. Any, you got you got yeah. a rant or anything for me on that? <laughs> So funny enough, I that's how I feel when people say that about coffee. So like if you're a coffee drinker, don't get upset at me. <laughs> but it drives me nuts <laughs> when people cannot start their day without coffee. I mean like, yeah, I enjoy coffee in the morning occasionally, but it's just if something becomes that much a part of your life where you can't live without it or you can't do something without it, then there's there's an addiction there. there is. You know? There is. You you yeah, you need to need to get rid of the addiction you need to you need to take some steps to do something different yeah i i think that anyone can get rid of their smartphone um saying that in my head i ping my husband's a web developer who works from home and so i can already hear what he's saying even if (laughs) meaning like he's like yes but he needs to like test the website on different devices Mm -hmm. and whatnot Um, so I guess just thinking, trying to think of all the different people who would be coming at me saying, yeah, but I need a smartphone for this. I need a smartphone for that. And maybe it's something different. Like if it's work and you have one because you're using it for work, that's one thing, but then it's away. And then you have a different phone when your work day is done, um, for your personal life. So I think there's always a workaround. There's always, there's always, um, things that can be done. And like you said, like 15, 20 Plus, years ago, this was not a part of everyone's daily daily life. Absolutely, no. absolutely. So, yeah. I think uh, I think the my final uh, takeaway on this is that we thought that more more information, more communication, was going to improve the human experience, and and it it's helped me fix my dishwasher because I can find stuff, and it, and there's there is definitely made it easier for me to to do things. Uh, but yeah. it hasn't improved the human condition, which is why am I here and what is the purpose of my life? The smart device mm-hmm. is not going to solve that or make it or, or social media or any of that stuff. That that dilemma stays with us just like all of humanity, basically. Right. Yeah. And yeah, even even if there is some convenience or some um, some easiness in using using that technology if anything i feel like it's made us more isolated it has and less connected it has uh cheryl cheryl turkle uh she's she's a she's a great author uh she has a book called uh reclaiming conversation and she has another one that i have called uh, uh alone together uh, and she talks about how when uh when we're hyper connected with everyone like like through texting and messaging uh that we don't really we don't get a sense of who we are and and, and we wind up looking for ourselves and, and and other people and it was a real interesting i'm still putting my mind around that concept but that basically we have to have time where we sit with ourselves we sit with ourselves so that we can understand who we are and and uh and and so it's people like you uh, that are that are that are that are brave enough to go go out in the world and and, and do things like that and and uh, and my final question to you is uh, 
do you think this is a fad? Do you think people are just doing it because it's 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 a reactionary, or do you think there's actually going to some type of traction movement, or uh, is there a there there as they would say in your mind? Um, I I I feel like it it it's more of a movement shift. Um, I don't think it's just a fad. Um, yeah. I don't know. I I know that I'm not going to be going back to it. I mean, I I tend to like to go against the current. So mm-hmm. even if there ends up coming a time where like where you have to have a smartphone in order to do certain things, like I'm going to find every any possible way that <laughs> that I can to to not need that. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, no, I do feel like there it is a movement that's, that's here to stay. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Anna, I'm going to. We're at 57 minutes. I'm gonna. I'm going to go ahead and, and hit the stop button. Um, can you tell us uh, where? Do, where do you? I know you don't have social media, but uh, do you want to share your blog, or do you, can I put that in the links below, or or do you prefer to yeah. stay anonymous? Yeah, no, that, um, no, that's fine. If I don't even, I honestly don't even know what the the full microblog URL is. It, it's like Chana <laughs> at micro dot blog or something. I'll, I'll put a link down yeah. below. Yeah. If you want to put it below, then that's, I'm, I'm fine with that. But, but yeah. Sounds awesome. Good. <laughs> well, thanks so much. I hope we get to talk again and uh, I appreciate you taking the time. Yeah. Thanks so much.